the third and final episode of a model engineering comedy of errors. I machine away the part of the first eccentric sheave from which I removed too much metal. I am now making a second one which made it worthwhile drilling the eccentric hole deeper than required. Finally the ordeal is over and I now have individually adjustable eccentric sheaves for the high pressure cylinder valve gear. For now, here's the last part of machining this horrendous steel that I accidentally selected as a material for making the eccentrics. You can tell how bad it is by the sound that the lathe tool is making. One or two viewers wrote in with constructive comments and I think this is possibly some low carbon steel designed for welding, not turning. Note to self, when doing this job again, make sure you use a piece of cast iron. This is still a part of the comedy of errors. In this clip I'm making sure that the external diameter of the piece of steel matches the eccentric strap, and it does. After double checking the diameter, I'm now machining the other side of the part that sticks out. I find this a really weird way of making eccentrics. It's not really necessary, but it's like full-size practice. It holds the straps onto the sheaves quite easily. I'm more used to making small locomotive type eccentric sheaves which are different to these. Now I'm machining the other side of the eccentric sheave. I'm going to machine quite a good length of this to the correct diameter because I want to make two eccentric sheaves in case I get one wrong. And looking at the track record of this short series I have a sneaking feeling that something is going to go wrong at some stage in the process. Once I'd turned the eccentric sufficiently, I took the part out of the chuck. I then held the part very tightly using a barco pipe wrench. I didn't want to use my fingers on this because the way things have gone recently, I thought if I hold this with my fingers, I'm going to remove a finger or do some damage. So anyway, it's been held by these grips, which allows for good control and safe cutting of the eccentric sheave from the main material. Just out of curiosity, to finish this part, I'm using my Myford ML7R lathe, with plenty of lubricant and a very sharp cutting tool. But unfortunately, the facing operation still isn't good. Longitudinally, the finish is okay, but straight across the front leaves many rings. I'm being very careful not to remove too much metal from the front bit. After I'd machined the front, I turned the part around in the chuck and very carefully machined off quite a lot at the other side. I haven't shown this, but I'm sure you get the idea. Over now for the final operation. I need to drill a hole and thread it 4BA so I can put a grub screw in to hold the sheave to the crankshaft. And in order for this to happen, I'm using a needle file to file away the bit in the centre. And just for the record, when I drilled the hole, that was touch and go, and threading it was even worse. What a terrible piece of metal. Thankfully, the comedy of errors came to an end at last. Thankfully, the comedy of errors has come to an end at last. Back in the workshop that's built onto the kitchen, I put everything together, adjusted the valve gear, well, roughly adjusted the valve gear, and the engine works in this direction and it's running quite sweetly. I know it sounds like it's making a lot of noise, but that's because it's on a piece of worktop over the top of a kitchen unit, which is very hollow and amplifies the sound. These are only rough adjustments of the valve timing, and as you can see, the engine also now runs in the opposite direction, which is more than I could successfully get it to do with the 30 degree eccentric pair. In the next episode, I will show the final adjustment of the valve gear. Hopefully to make the engine run much better than it is doing currently. This job has been more difficult than I thought. My conclusion is that a Stuart triple expansion engine is difficult to build, difficult to assemble, and if you follow the drawing to the letter, difficult to time. I much prefer individual eccentrics.
The more I ran the engine, the smoother it got, and it's beginning to run a lot better. It's very powerful for its size. Don't forget, the first high-pressure cylinder is only three quarters of an inch in diameter, the size of a number 10. But the power that this thing gives is a lot more than a number 10. As this is a triple expansion steam engine, it will run much better than this using steam, as the steam expands as it cools. At this speed, it's important to make sure that the engine has a regular oil supply. When running in an engine, it's a good idea to over-oil it. You will notice that the oil is turning black in places. When the engine is finally successfully run in, the oil that I'm applying should stay brown and not turn black. As I mentioned earlier, this engine has been a challenge, but now all I need to do is fit the cladding. Oh yes, and set the timing precisely. I'll be setting the timing precisely in the next episode. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says video playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.